Hello guys. So today in this video, we will derive the equations required for us to carry out the back propagation in neural networks. The equations are all derivatives of cost function with respect to the weights and biases at different hidden layers. Okay. So we also need to calculate the derivatives of the activation functions at different layers in the network. Okay. So these derivatives are all dependent on the type of the cost function that we are using. So the derivatives will be different for different cost functions. So if we are using binary cross entropy, the derivatives will be different. If we are using cross entropy, the derivatives will be different. So if we are using MSC, the derivatives will be different, so on and so forth, right? So basically whatever we are deriving today is dependent on particular specific cost function, okay? So let's get started. So let us assume that we are dealing with a binary classification task at our task, right? And our cost function will be binary cross entropy. So here is the network that I will be considering uh, for us in order to derive the equations so that we can carry out the back propagation and apply gradient descent algorithm so that the network can learn. Okay. So this network has two hidden layers and one output layer. Of course, we have input layer. Okay. And so we will have three set of weights. So W1, B1, W2, B2, W3, B3. So these things we have to update while doing back propagation by making use of gradient descent algorithm. And this output unit here at this output layer, this will have the activation function of sigmoid. So activation at this layer will be sigmoid function. And at these two layers, it could be either tan h or relu or leaky relu. It could be anything. So based on the activation at different layers, we have to find out those derivatives. Okay. So we'll see how we'll do that. So why actually we need to do back propagation? So actually we need a way to update these weights and biases, right? So that we can minimize the cost. Correct. So in order to do that, we need to have an algorithm at hand. And that algorithm, what we'll be using is called gradient descent. Okay. So here I have written the gradient descent algorithm so we have already seen this while we are while we were dealing with machine learning linear regression on logistic regression algorithms right so gradient descent is a widely used optimization algorithm so there are many other optimization algorithms but for this video we will make use of gradient descent algorithm okay so here are the steps with respect to this particular network w1 b1 w2 b2 w3 b3 weights and biases so this is what we have to do so this is what gradient descent tells us. So we have to carry out these steps. We have to update these weights and biases until convergence. Correct. So when I say until convergence, what it is until and unless we minimize our cost function. Correct. So we need to appear or we need to come to a global minimum. Then we say that we have converged. So how do we come to the global minimum by keeping on updating these weights and biases at every iteration. Okay. So this is what we have to do. We have already seen these equations, right? So W3 is equal to W3 minus alpha into derivative of cost function with respect to W3, right? And similarly, W2 will be updated as W2 minus alpha into derivative of cost function with respect to W2. Similarly, W1 will be updated as W1 minus alpha into derivative of cost function with respect to W1. And the same step will be followed for B1, B2, B3, which are biases. So for updating biases, we will take the derivative of the cost function with respect to the specific bias at that particular layer. Okay. So B3 is equal to B3 minus alpha into derivative of cost with respect to B3, so on and so forth up to derivative of B1. Okay. So this is what we have to update now. And these things which I have rounded off here, these are all called as gradients. Right. So what are these gradients? These are actually the derivatives of cost function which is j w comma b okay so let's get started with the derivation of this so what all we need so in order to derive these derivatives or gradients we need to know the equations of forward propagation and also we need to know the equation of cost function that we will be using okay so these are the equations of forward propagation I have already written here. So we will have Z1 and A1 at this particular layer, Z2 and A2 at this particular layer and in the end we will have Z3 and A3. So this A3 is also our prediction which is also called as Y hat. Okay. 
So the equation for Z1, A1, I have written here. Z1 is equal to W1 into X plus B1. So this is matrix multiplication. Okay. And once we have this Z1, we will apply some activation function. It could be either tan H or ReLU or any other activation function of your choice. Okay. We will apply that activation function on Z1 and then we will get A1. So similarly, I have written the equation for Z2, Z3 and A2, A3. Okay. Remember, in the end, the activation function for the output layer will be sigmoid function. Okay. So that's what I have written here, sigmoid of Z3. So I have written some dimensions here. So let me quickly go through that. Okay. So guys, I will take this session in a step by step manner very slowly. Okay. So that you will not lose the track and I will try to keep it very concise and make you understand it in easy way. Okay. So I have written the dimensions here so that we will not lose our way around when we are dealing with multiple gradients at different levels. Okay. So in this particular network, we have five neurons at each hidden layer and one neuron at output. And we will assume that our input features will be four. So for every example or every observation or every single training example, we will have four features x1, x2, x3, x4. So based on these all considerations, shape of w1 will be 5 cross 4, shape of w2 will be 5 cross 5, shape of w3 will be 1 cross 5. And so bias at layer 1 will be 5 cross 1, 1 bias for each neuron. At layer 2, hidden layer 2, bias 2, b2 will be of shape 5 cross 1 because we have 5 neurons in the layer 2 as well. And in the output layer, we have single neuron. So the bias will be a single number. It will be 1. Okay. So this is what we will achieve actually. So let us walk through the dimensions first. So this is going to be important in order to understand the matrix multiplication and element wise multiplication when we are deriving the equations for gradients. Okay. So just give more concentration at this particular step here now. Okay. So we are doing w1 into x and I told this is a matrix multiplication plus bias 1. We will add the bias. So the resulting would be we are multiplying a matrix of shape 5 cross 4 with 4 cross m and the resulting matrix would be 5 cross m and then we are adding the bias of shape 5 cross 1. So the resulting output that is z1 it will be of shape 5 cross m right 5 cross 4 4 cross m the output will be 5 cross m. Since z1 is 5 cross m a1 will also be of shape Phi cross m. Okay. So similarly, what we will do, we will go through the dimensionalities of Z2. So W2 is of dimension phi cross phi. A1 is of dimension phi cross m. We have got it from the previous step, phi cross m. And then B2, it's phi cross 1. Okay. Phi cross 1 here. Right. So the resulting Z2 will be of shape phi cross m. This will be of shape phi cross m. Correct. And so our A2 will be also of shape phi cross m. Okay. So hope this is clear. And finally, we will come at the output layer Z3, where we are multiplying weight 3 with A2 from the previous layer plus adding the bias B3. So the resulting output would be we are multiplying the weights of dimension 1 cross 5 with A2 of dimension phi cross m. This is a matrix multiplication again. So the resulting output would be of shape 1 cross m. Z3 will be 1 cross m. And so the resulting A3 after applying the sigmoid function will also be of shape 1 cross m. Does it make sense? Yes, it makes sense because we need one output for each example or observation. Correct? So generally, we will represent the total number of examples or observations that we have with us with the letter m. So if we have m observations, we will get m outputs, one output for each observation in the end. Okay. So this is making perfect sense now. And we will consider the cost function. Uh, I told you we are dealing with binary classification, right? So the cost function would be binary cross entropy. And this is what the cost function is. Minus 1 by m summation over all the observations or training example. Yi multiplied with log of y hat i plus 1 minus y i multiplied with the log of 1 minus y hat i. So here y hat, these are our predictions, right? So y hat are our predictions. 
and with this particular network architecture y hat is also our a3 right because in the end we are getting a3 as an output right so that's what our prediction is so y hat is nothing but a3 so this is our cost function for all the examples okay and similarly if we want to represent this for one single example we will call it as a loss and we will do away with this summation here because we are dealing with only one example so how we can write it we can write it in this way so there is no averaging out and there is no summing over all the observations so the simple loss function for one observation is y into log of a3 i am representing y hat by a3 now right so that it will be easy for us to calculate the gradients y into log of a3 plus 1 minus y into log of 1 minus a3 so in the end we will multiply it with a minus sign because we have minus sign here okay so this is the loss for single example okay so now that we have seen it let me write these forward propagation equations once again here so that we will be able to derive the gradients okay so what we will do i will copy this loss function here so in order to derive the gradients what we will do we will consider we, we are dealing with only one training example and then we will generalize it over okay generalize it over all the training examples later okay in this video only but i will do it as the last step of each gradient cal calculation okay so let's proceed so i have copied this loss function here when i say loss it's only for one observation okay so this is my loss and let me quickly write out the equations for forward propagation okay so z1 is equal to w1 into x plus b1 a1 is equal to some activation function of z1 okay and z2 is equal to w2 into a1 plus b2 and a2 will be equal to some activation function let's call it as f2 of z2 why i am dealing with different notations at different layers for activation functions because at each layer we can have different activation functions so this f1 and f2 could be different okay so that's the reason i have chosen f1 for hidden layer 1 and f2 for hidden layer 2 okay so similarly we will write the equation for z3 z3 is equal to w3 into a2 plus b3 and a3 will be we know this this is already a sigmoid activation function on z3 so these are our forward propagation equation and this is our loss function so now what we have to do we have to apply gradient descent in order to minimize this particular loss in the end we have to minimize this particular cost function over all the examples and in order to apply gradient descent we have to work out these formulas and in this formulas we already know w3 w2 w1 b1 b2 b3 but we do not know these terms here what are called as gradients so let us try to derive these gradients now okay and by the way this alpha here this alpha here is called as learning rate okay so this you have already seen it uh, if you if you haven't seen or know about this you can watch my video on gradient descent algorithm okay where i have explained how to apply gradient descent on linear regression logistic regression in a separate videos so you can go ahead and watch that so now coming to deriving the equations for these gradients so let me just write so we have to instead of writing j i will write dl so this is actually called as del but i will call it as d so that we can pronounce it simply in a simple way okay so dl by d w3 so this with respect to chain rule we can write it as so this actually depends on loss on a3 and further a3 is dependent on z3 and z3 is dependent on w3 so in the end we will get this particular equation dl by w3 so this i have written with the help of chain rule of derivatives okay hope you already know this if you haven't uh, understood it you can go back and watch my other video where i have explained applying gradient descent to neural networks and i have explained about the chain rule in a clear way there okay so this is what we have to do now 
So in order to arrive at this particular step, dj by dw3, we have to find out the equations for dl by da3, da3 by dz3 and dz3 by dw3. So now let's first find out one by one these equations and in that the first one would be dl by da3. So if you know this cost function, so this is the derivative of this loss with respect to a3, correct? So let's do that. So this can be given as minus y divided by a3, okay, minus y by a3. I am, I am multiplying this minus with plus. So this is minus and this 1 minus y will remain as it is because we are taking the derivative with respect to a3. So this log of 1 minus a3, derivative of log of 1 minus a3 with respect to a3 is given as 1 by 1 minus a3 multiplying with minus 1 because of this minus a3 here. Okay. So this is what equation for or derivation derivative of loss with respect to a3 looks like. So we will simplify this. So this will be minus y by a3 plus 1 minus y by 1 minus a3. So I have just multiplied this both minus and minus. So I have taken plus here. So our dl by da3 would be so minus y into 1 minus a3. I am just simplifying this whole equation. Okay. So plus 1 minus y into a3 divided by a3 into 1 minus a3. So if you further simplify this, you will get minus y plus a3y plus a3 minus a3y in the numerator and divided by a3 into 1 minus a3 in the denominator. So these two terms will get cancelled and in the end we will get dl by da3 is equal to a3 minus y by a3 into 1 minus a3. So this is our first equation in the chain rule here, right? So dl by da3 we have found out, okay? So now we will find out what is da3 by dz3, okay? So let me write that da3 by dz3. So these are all partial derivatives, okay? That's why I am writing del or do. You can call it as do or del, okay? So now what is this a3, guys? So a3 is a sigmoid of z3, correct? So if I expand this a3 here, a3 is equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z3, correct? So now we have to find out the derivative of a3 with respect to z3, okay? So let's do that. So in order to find out this derivative, let me write it d by d z3 of, so this a3 I am writing it as 1 plus e to the power minus z3 to the power minus 1. So what I did here, so the same equation, I got this term in the numerator, so I have given the minus, I have raised it to the power minus 1. So it's just a reciprocal of what we have here, okay. So this is how we can write it. So now what we will do, we will simplify, we will find out the derivative with respect to z3. So in order to find out the derivative, what we will do, this minus 1 will come here, minus 1 into 1 plus e to the power minus z3 to the power minus 2 okay into e to the power minus z3 so this is what the derivative of this particular term with respect to z3 looks like okay so this further can be written as this e to the power minus z3 this will be minus e to the power z3 okay right and this, this further can be simplified as this minus 1 and minus e to the power z3 will result in e to the power z3 plus e to the power z3 divided by, so I will take this term in the denominator. So I can write it as 1 plus e to the power minus z3 square. Okay. So now what we can do, if you see here, 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z3 is a3. So I will just separate it out 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z3 square into e to the power minus z3 
Okay, so this can be written as a3 square, correct? So this term here is a3 square, correct? Into e to the power minus z3. Okay. Now let us write this e to the power minus z3 also in terms of a3. So how I can write that? So we know that a3 is equal to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus z3. So what I'll do? I will just shuffle these terms here in this equation. So I'll say 1 plus e to the power minus z3 is equal to 1 by a3, right? So I want e to the power z3. I want this to be expressed in a3 so that it will be easy in the further equations, okay? So what I'll do? e to the power minus z3 is equal to 1 by a3 minus 1, correct? So this e to the power minus z3 will be 1 minus a3 by a3, okay? So now what I'll do? a3 square into, I'll substitute this for e to the power minus z3. So it will be, let me just scroll down, 1 minus a3 divided by a3. So here, 1 a3 will get cancelled. I will be left with a3 into 1 minus a3. So this is my derivative of loss with respect to z3. Okay, so now we have derived these two terms. Now let us see what derivative of z3 with respect to w3 looks like. So z3 is, what is z3? Equation for z3 is w3 into a2 plus b3, correct? So I had written this above here, right? So let me just look at it. z3 is equal to w3 into a2 plus b3, correct? So that's what I have written here. Okay, so now we have to find out the derivative of loss with respect to z3. Okay, so it's simple. So it will be just dz. So this is what we have to find, right? So dz3 by dw3. So dz3 with respect to dw3 is equal to. So this will be treated as constant. So this will be turned to 0 and w3 into a2 derivative of w3 a2 with respect to w3 will be a2 okay so now we have got individual components then we will able to find out derivative of loss with respect to weight 3 so what we have to do we have to multiply the derivatives of a3 z3 and w3 that we have found out here so let's do that so what i'll i'll write dl by dw3 is equal to I will just write that equation once again here, dA3, dA3 by dZ3. So here this is not dL3 by dZ3, this is dA3 by dZ3, okay. So sorry for that mistake, that was the innocent error. So dA3 by dZ3 multiplied by dZ3 by dW3, okay. So now I will substitute these terms here a3 minus y divided by a3 into 1 minus a3 multiply with this particular term a3 into 1 minus a3 multiply with this particular term a2. So this will be cancelled. So our dl by dw3 will be equal to a2 a3 minus y into a2. Okay, so this is what the derivation of loss with respect to w3. So now this is considering only one single example. So now we can generalize it to all the examples and we can take the average. So dj by dw3 is equal to, I will just say 1 by m and it will be a3 minus y into a2 okay so now let's work out the dimensionality for this particular thing so that you will understand whatever we are doing is not out of hands and making perfect sense okay so just know that w3 is of shape 1 1 by 5 correct so why it is 1 by 5 because of this particular architecture here w3 is of shape 1 by 5 okay so now we have to get 5 gradients to update this w3 correct so it should be also of shape 1 by 5 
let's see if it's giving that particular shape so a3 a3 is our shape 1 a what's the shape of a3 so here i have written right uh, the shapes of everything 1 by m correct so let's write that 1 by m and this y this will be m correct so we will have m so we will subtract this the resulting will be again 1 by m and a2 is of shape so what's the shape of a2 so let's if we just check the shape of a2 it's 5 by m correct 5 by m this is a2 correct so we cannot multiply this in this way right because the dimensions doesn't match so what we will do we will change this to 1 by m into a3 minus y into a2 transpose okay so now what happens so this we already know this is 1 by m and this transpose will be m by 5 okay so now if we treat this as matrix multiplication the resulting output would be 1 by 5 correct so which is matching with the shape of w3 so this is making sense our computations are perfectly fine and they are correct okay so now we have derived this particular gradient here okay so now we will see how we can compute this dj by db3 so for this also what we will do we will consider a loss and then we will apply the chain rule to find out the individual gradients and then we will combine them to find out dl by db3 so let's just write out the chain rule for dl by db3 so this can be written as so this few things remain same here dl by da3 da3 by dz3 and dz3 by db3 so this is what again how we have written this is again with the help of chain rule chain rule of derivatives so this remains same everywhere okay so now we already know this right dl by da3 da3 by dz3 because we have done this here so if you just look at these two terms this is what it is a3 minus ay correct so this term can be written as a3 minus ay sorry not ay it's a3 minus y correct a3 minus y and now we have to find out the derivative of z3 with respect to b3 again what's the equation of z3 it's w3 into a2 plus b3 correct so now what we have to do we have to find the derivative of z3 with respect to b3 so while we are finding the derivative with respect to this particular term here this will be treated as constant it will be turned to 0 and b3 it will be just 1 correct so multiplying with 1 so we have dl by da3 into da3 by dz3 which is a3 minus y and this particular term here dz3 by db3 is equal to 1 correct and so what we will do dl by db3 is equal to a3 minus y into 1 which is a3 minus y okay so now what we will do we will represent this in terms of dz3 so that our equations will be matching and it will be easy for us to update these particular gradients so what we, what i'll say what i'll say i'll just say dl by db3 is equal to so if you look at this a3 minus ay this is nothing but dl by dz3 correct okay so in in short i will write this as dz3 okay so let's write that so dl by db3 is equal to i am combining these two terms so it will be dl by dz3 okay into 1 why 1 because 1 is the derivative of this particular term here okay so this further sim to simplify it i will write dl by db3 is equal to this entire thing i will represent this as dz3 okay so this is our equation for 
dl by db3 so again this is for one single observation so we can generalize it to all the training examples or all the observations in this particular way dj so instead of l it will be j now because we are considering all the observations dj by db3 is equal to 1 by m into dz3 okay and this should be the summation summation so what's again what's the what's the shape of z3 so if you look here z3 will be of shape so i have written it here above right z3 will be of shape 1 cross m correct so let me scroll down so z3 will be of shape 1 cross m and b3 is our bias term correct so we have to sum this across the examples okay across columns so that we will be able to arrive the arrive at this particular average and then update dj by db3 so that in the end we can update b3 is equal to b3 minus alpha into dj by db3 okay so now we have seen we have derived these two things dj by dw3 dj by db3 okay so now let's derive dj by dw2 and dj by db2 okay so for that what i'll write so let me just change it so now we will find out dj by dw2 and dj by db2 okay now listen to this uh, with very much concentration because we will deal with the derivatives of activation functions here okay so again this d we will consider only single example and instead of j we will represent with l in the end we will generalize it to all the examples as we did earlier okay so let me write dl by dw2 again with the help of chain rule i can write it as dl by d a 3 d a 3 by d z 3 d z 3 by d a 2 d a 2 by d z 2 and then d z 2 by d w 2 okay so this is what we have to find out now in order to arrive at this particular gradient d l by d w 2 okay so this we already know right d l by d z 3 so this we have represented as d z3 correct so where from we got this we got it from here we got it from here right so dl by dz3 correct and dz3 by da2 so if you look at this particular term so again what is the equation for z3 it is w3 into a2 plus b3 correct so now if you take the derivative of this z3 with respect to a2 this will be termed as constant so it will be turned to zero and derivative of w3 a2 with respect to a2 is w3 correct so this will be w3 and this a2 so what is a2 a2 is some activation function on z2 correct so this is what we have to take d a2 by d z2 so we have to take the derivative of this particular function correct so let me represent this as f prime of z2 okay so this is the derivative of activation function at layer 2 okay so this function the derivative actually depends on what type of activation function we are using so if it's relu the der derivative will be different if it's tan h the derivative will be different if it's leak relu the derivative will be different so on and so forth okay so it depends on the activation function that we have at that particular layer okay and now we have to compute this dz2 by dw2 let's try to do that so let let me write this uh, this z2 right so how we can write z2 z2 will be w2 into a1 plus b2 correct so this is dz2 with respect to w2 
right so this will be treated as constant this will be turned to zero and the derivative of w2 a1 with respect to w2 will be just a1 correct so this will be a1 so now what we can do we can write this as dl by dw2 is equal to it will be so now let's check the dimensions again guys okay so this dz3 it will be of shape so in this case we have five neurons right at the layer uh, so we have this uh, sorry we have one neuron in the output layer right so this will be of shape 1 by m so m is the observations w3 will be of shape 1 by 5 okay and this z2 will be of shape 5 by m because we have five neurons in the second hidden layer and this a1 will be of shape 5 by m because we have 5 neurons in the hidden layer 1 also. So that is why these are the dimensions. So in order to understand this, we have to do some matrix multiplication and some adjustments. Okay? So let us check that out. So what, what I can write? This, I need to multiply these two things. right? So this will be W3 transpose into DZ3. Okay, so why this works? W3 transpose will be of shape phi cross 1 and DZ3 will be of shape 1 cross m. So the result will be phi cross m. Okay, so this we have sorted out. Now we have to deal with F prime Z2 and A1. Correct? Then I will do F prime Z2. Why I can do this? This will be of also of shape phi cross m right so this will be of shape phi cross m okay and then in the end multiply with a1 can we multiply it with a1 a1 is of shape phi cross m right so we cannot multiply two matrices of same shape so we have to take the transpose of a1 so now it will be a1 transpose so this will be m cross 5 correct so now what we will do so this particular symbol here this is element wise multiplication okay element wise multiplication okay so when i say element wise multiplication if we have two matrices 1 2 3 4 and 1 2 4 6 so this one will be multiplied with this one two will be multiplied with two three will be multiplied with four 4 will be multiplied with 6. So, this is what element wise multiplication is actually. Okay. So, this symbol is element wise multiplication. And then this dot is again a matrix multiplication. So, these two things are matrix multiplication. This particular thing is a element wise multiplication. Okay. So, in the end, what we can write? So, let us represent this as this entire thing as dz2. So, why I can write it as that? So, if you look at this, I have written this entire thing here dl by dz2 right so this entire thing here is dl by dz2 and then we are multiplying with transpose of a1 right so now dl by dw2 is equal to i'll write dl by dz2 as just dz2 so just like above i represented dl by dz3 as dz3 right so, I am representing dl by dz2 as dz2, then matrix multiplication with a1 transpose. So, this is our dl by dw2. Now, this is for only one example. Okay? So, for generalizing it to all the observations, it will be dj by dw2 is equal to 1 by m into dz2 matrix multiplication with a1 transpose. Okay? So, this is what the equation for dj by dw2 looks like, this particular thing. Okay? So, do not worry, I will provide the equations in the end in a cleaner way. So, now I am deriving these everything so that you guys would know how actually neural network learns. So, what is the behind, what are the behind the scenes steps that neural network has to take in order for it to learn. Okay? So, that is why I am taking this. Uh, extra going this extra mile to explain you the derivations and how it works okay
so please bear with me if you feel bored uh, so but you will get definitely benefited out of this okay so now we have computed dj by dw2 we will compute dj by db2 so what it is so let me just write it so d j by d b 2 so this is with respect to bias correct so again this d j by d b 2 can be written as by following the same chain rule right so we have written with respect to b 3 here so we can write the same chain rule for b 2 as well correct so in the end if you if you can come to the derivations so if you want i can write the chain rule also okay let let me write it okay so this will be again we'll take the single example dl by db2 okay so this will be dl by da3 okay then uh, give me a second let me just refer to it because i should i don't want to give you some false equations okay so give me a second yeah so dl by da3 da3 by dz3 dz3 by d uh, this will be a2 correct and then d a2 by d z2 and then d z2 by d b2 right so now i think we have seen most of this in this particular equation up to d a2 by d z2 right we have seen this here till here right and this is nothing but this is nothing but d z2 correct this is d z2 let me write it as d z2 okay why because this entire thing here i have represented this as d z2 correct so that's what i have written here now what we have to do we have to multiply it with the derivative of z2 with respect to b2 so in order to do this let me write the equation for z2 z2 will be equal to w2 into a1 plus b2 correct so now dz2 by db2 will be equal to just 1 because this will be treated as constant it will be turned to 0 and derivative of x with respect to itself is 1 so it will be 1 so this can be written as dz2 into 1 okay so now we have our equation for dl by db2 which is equal to dz2 now this is for one single example again so in order to generalize it for all the observations or examples we can write it as dj by db2 is equal to 1 by m into the summation of dz2 so this is what the equation for the gradient dj by db2 looks like okay so this again this sum will be column wise okay so we have to take the sum for each column and then club it and then divide it by so many number of examples so in that we will get the gradient for bias 2 okay so this is what the equation looks like so till now we have derived these four equations okay so now we are towards the end of deriving equation for these two gradients dj by dw1 dj by db1 so let's get started with it so let me just write it i know this is long and bit frightening to be frank but i hope i am able to make you understand how these are derived okay so now we have to derive dj by dw1 and dj by db1 okay so let me write it for single example and also with the help of chain rule i can write this as dl by da3 so i have to come all the way back up to dw1 somehow right so that's what i am doing here da3 by dz3 dz3 by da2 da2 by dz2 dz2 by da1 da1 by dz1 and in the end dz1 by dw1 so this is what the chain rule for dl by dw1 looks like so again this is with the help of chain rule guys so there is no much in-depth math in this okay 
So this is just a chain rule of derivatives. Okay. So now, now we will see. So this particular thing, dl by dz2, we already know this, right? dl by dz2, right? So this is dz2. How? We already seen this here, dz2, up to here, right? Now dz2 by da1. Now we have to know what this is. So for this, let me see what z2 is. z2 is, uh, sorry, there is something miss here. Give me a second. Let me correct it. Okay, no, uh, this is fine. Uh, because of so many equations, even I got confused. So let me write z2 here. z2 is equal to w2 into a1 plus b2, correct? So now I want dz2 with respect to da1, correct? So it will be w2, correct? So this will be w2, okay? So now this da1 by dz1. So what is a1? a1 is some activation function of on z1, correct? So this is at layer 1, f1. So this will be the derivative of this particular function. Let me call it as f1 dash or f1 prime f1 prime of z1 okay and in the end we need to find dz1 by dw1 so this f1 prime it could be again different based on the different activation functions if it's relu it will be a derivative of relu if it's tan h it will be the derivative of tan h so on and so forth okay so now let us compute the last thing here so d let me write it below so dz1 by dw1 so for this, we have to know what Z1 is. So, Z1 is W1 into X plus B1, correct? And so, DZ1 by DW1 is just X. So, X is our observation. Okay? So, this is just X. So, now I will write it in this way. DL by DW1 is equal to DZ2 into w2 into f1 prime of z1 into x okay so now if you uh, work out the dimensionalities similar to what we have seen in this particular thing here right so we can write this as w2 transpose dz2 so again this is a matrix multiplication okay multiplied with f1 prime of z1 into x transpose so similar to what we have done for dl by dw2 okay so that's what i have written here so this will be this is uh sorry give me a second let me correct it okay so this this particular term here this entire thing okay so this will be d l by d z1 correct so till here okay so this is dl by dz1 into x transpose so for the shorter representation i'll write this as dz1 into x transpose so this is our again matrix multiplication Okay, so now this is for one example. Again, we will generalize it to a, all the examples and replace L with J. It will be dj by dw1 is equal to 1 by m into dz1 into x transpose. So, this is the equation for gradient of the cost with respect to weights 1 at layer 1. Okay, so similarly, we can find dl by db1 now okay so let's find dl by db1 so this with the help of chain rule again we can write the same thing till here and then in the end dz1 by db1 so this entire thing here is dz1 correct so till here from here to here it remains the same dz1 or let me write it okay so let me write it dl by da3 Give me a second. dl by d 
ए थ्री डी ए थ्री बाई डी जेड थ्री डी जेड थ्री बाई डी ए टू डी ए टू बाई डी जेड टू डी जेड टू बाई डी ए वन डी ए वन बाई डी जेड वन डी जेड वन बाई डी बी वन ओके सो टिल हियर द इक्वेशन रिमेन सेम एज ऑफ डी एल बाई डी डब्ल्यू वन ओनली दिस पर्टिक्युलर टर्म चेंजेस हियर सो दिस आई हैव रिप्रेजेंटेड एज डी जी वन करेक्ट so now we have to find out dz1 with respect to db1 so for this we will write the equation of z1 z1 is w1 into x plus b1 so now with respect to b1 so this will be turned to 0 and it will be just 1 so our dl by db1 will be equal to dz1 that's it okay so now if i have to generalize this for all the observations it will be dj sorry for that dj by db1 is equal to i will average it because we have 1 by m in the cost function not in the loss function right so this is 1 by 1 into dz1 so again this will be a summation column wise okay so now we have come to the end of all the derivations okay so we have completed all the um, completed the computation of all these gradients and in the end we will apply this particular formula to update the weights and we do this at every iteration so let's say we are running gradient descent for 100 iterations we will do these steps for 100 times and update the weights and biases for 100 times okay so now what i'll do i'll give you the weights and biases equations quickly what all we have to compute and how we will update in the end so let me write that out okay guys so i have written the equations here so this is what you want in the end so one small notation change here uh, nothing much you will uh, it's not that i have changed anything with this particular notations so instead of representing dj by dw3 dj by db3 and all i have just written it as dw3 db3 so on and so forth okay so what i mean to say is instead of writing dj by dw3 i have written this as dw3 that's it okay and instead of writing dj3 by dw2 i have written this as dw2 okay and similarly for biases and the weights at layer 1 dj by dw1 is written as dw1 and biases dj by db3 is written as db3 and dj by db2 is written as db2 dj by db1 is written as db1 so that's what you can see here so when you see dw3 it's nothing but dj by dw3 so on and so forth okay so this particular set of equations will help you to update the weights at layer 3 this particular set of equations will help you to update the weights at layer 2 weights and biases and this particular set of equations will help you to update the weights and biases at layer 1 so we are stopping at layer 1 we are not going back to input layer so why we are not going back because we do not want to calculate the gradients at that particular layer because those inputs are already uh, fixed right so we are training on those fixed inputs we have to just update our weights and biases in order for our neural network to minimize the cost in the end right so once we have this what we will do we will just apply the gradient descent formula so what it is w3 is equal to w3 minus alpha into dj by dw3 w2 is equal to W two minus alpha into D J by D W two. W one is equal to W one minus alpha into D J by D W one. And the biases B three is equal to B three minus alpha into D J by D B one. B two is equal to B two minus alpha into D J by D B two. sorry this is b3 this is b2 
and B1 will be equal to B1 minus alpha into dj by db1. Okay. So, this is what we have to do and we will implement this in Python from scratch in my next video. We will take any example uh, with certain features and target variable where we will be dealing with binary classification and we will try to train the neural network. Okay. So, hope you guys understood and I was able to give you the understanding of how derivatives work and how we derive the equations for these gradients and how we do update the gradient descent for neural networks. So, that's it for this video guys. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers so that they can also learn if they are interested to learn in depth with all the math involved. Okay. So, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. Okay. So, till we see in the next video, happy learning. Bye-bye.